Hello, I'm Simon Pegg, and this is my career in four minutes. I mean, when we made Sean, we, we never knew we were going to make three. We had no idea. It wasn't a grand plan. But it became apparent to us that we, we could. And when that goal came in sight, you know, our, our, our biggest sort of desire was to reach it. And, and, and when The World's End opened, I think the last premiere we went to was probably in L.A., it was such an amazing feeling because it was what we'd always wanted to do, you know. There's, there would always be a slight disappointment that we didn't make another series of space, you know, because I think there were probably about three series in that show, but it didn't work out that way. But this, you know, we finished it, and, and, and I think we finished it on a real high as well. Never come to work unless you're going to give 100% is what Tom engenders in people, and not by shouting that at you, he just does it by being Tom Cruise, because you sort of go, oh, okay, I better... I better up my game a little bit because he is such a committed sort of actor and producer and professional. You know, it, it just anyone you ask anyone that's worked with him, it be they cast or crew, that's what he kind of like brings out in you. It's this sort of desire to to, to really bring it. You know, and uh, I love that about him. It's a, it's a it's a real passion that he has. And I've met David Schwimmer, uh, who was directing it. I met him on Band of Brothers, and then we met again about this. And it just it would it had been knocking around and and I really liked David and I, I um, th it came up and it just seemed like the right time to do it and uh, it was a real fun film to make you know I was really impressed with David because he kind of like um, you know obviously knew him as Ross from Friends but he he was a very um, he was a very collaborative director he he really knew his stuff technically and he was obviously being an actor he understood what I was going through so it, it was a very happy experience for me and I really my wife loves that movie <laughs> you know she always really watches it when it comes on TV it was very strange and I remember the physical moment of stepping onto the bridge I, I, I sort of like tapped JJ on the shoulder and said look look I'm gonna go on the bridge I'm Scotty and I'm gonna go on the bridge and I actually walked through the view screen it wasn't like I didn't come through the turbo lift or anything I walked through the front of the set but um, it was it was awesome and it still doesn't ever pass me by we, all of us were all like, we're still like, oh wow, we're in Star Trek, you know, which is, which is great fun. Even though it's now become more of a sort of, we're more used to it now. We feel more, less like visitors and more like, you know, we own the ship now, which is a nice feeling. Um, but I love doing that job. It's such a great group of people. They're a, a, a real great bunch in every way. Each one of them has a, has a excellent qualities. Paul was, was essentially our, our own sort of homage to Close Encounters and E.T. and films of that ilk. I mean, the whole joke being that Paul had been on Earth for so long that he had influenced all those films. Hence, you know, there's a scene when Stephen calls uh, e, uh, calls E.T., calls Paul to talk about E.T. And we, Steven Spielberg came in to, um, to do that voice, you know, uh, when we were doing some of the sound recording with Seth Rogen. And that was because we'd done Tintin with him and we'd become friends. Uh, he, he's an awesome man, a very generous, uh, d deeply gifted person and, um, and always happy to talk about previous stuff. He, he's very easy to geek out with Steven Spielberg because he'll just say, oh yeah, yeah, he'll tell you. He'll say, what was it like doing Close Encounters? And he'll be like, well, and he'll tell you a big long story as long as it's not, as long as it's between setups. Um, that was great. And to be directed by him, I totally understood his his sort of status, who he is, because he he has such an innate awareness of the space and how the camera moves and where it is. And it was very interesting because we were using motion capture. It was a technology he'd not used before. So he was able to do things with a camera he'd previously been unable to do, like shoot from under the ground and things like that. So it was interesting seeing him learning a new craft, you know. I hadn't read the book. I, when I found about the script, I decided not to read the book. I thought, let's take it from the screenplay and I'll read the book at a later date because um, I didn't want to sort of complicate things. That was my excuse for being lazy and not wanting to read a book. Um, and I think, yeah, I'd always, I, I want to be able to do both kinds of film because it's important, I think. I want to stay in the UK to live, certainly, and I still want to make British films because this is the film industry that I came from and I, I want to support it. I just don't want to just disappear off. I don't think films are made in Hollywood particularly anymore. They're made all over the world. Even Hollywood films aren't made in Hollywood. You know, they're made, if they're not made in other parts of America like Louisiana or New Mexico, they're made here or in Prague or whatever. Every film I'm making this year is in London, which is great. But yeah, I do want to make small independent films. You get a slightly more freedom in those films. You're not you know, bigger films are often made, not always, but often made by committee. They're often, there are shadowy cabals of creatives who aren't really creative people calling the shots on some films, not on the ones I've been in. I certainly wouldn't say that about Star Trek or Mission, actually. But I don't want to find myself making a film that I don't really like, you know. And I think it's important to make small films as well because uh, they are the lifeblood, I think, of cinema, really.